Hello, love. Today I'm giving a quick mixed media lesson where I show you how to create a loose, intuitive piece with no preconceived idea about where it will end up. You can watch this video simply to relax and be inspired, or you can watch it twice, once to see what to expect, and again with your materials out to follow along. Just hit pause as needed to take things step by step because I move the video along at a quick pace. I'm offering this with the option to make a donation if you like. You don't have to, but if you find it valuable and you're able, I will leave more information about that down below. But if you're having a hard time making ends meet, this video is especially for you to enjoy and to help ease your mind. The world is in need of healing and art is a beautiful way to help. So let's begin. All right, first off, I have some papers. Some are from books, some are from the store. And I also have a canvas panel, a glass palette, and I'm gonna start with some fluid acrylic matte medium. So here's a swatch of paper, and I'm going to show you how to apply paper to the canvas with the acrylic medium. You're gonna want a flat brush, something fairly wide, and you're going to coat the bristles and kind of memorize where the paper sits on the canvas and then you're going to coat the canvas with a generous application of the acrylic medium. You want some lift on it. You don't want to paint it on too thin. And then you apply the paper and smooth it out with the brush which has the acrylic medium on it. It will dry clear and I kind of pick up any that is off to the side and apply it over the top so that it's sealed. And now I'm squeezing out my colors and I'm going to leave these down below as well so you don't have to memorize them right now. But I want them on hand and I'm going to be alternating between painting and collaging. So I'm just going to use the medium and the paint to layer. And at first I'm just following my mood. I'm letting the paint kind of flow where it wants to go, scribbling, covering things up, seeing how they mix on the canvas. And then I'll switch to some paper and apply some paper down. This is thick paper, so I kind of have to work it a little bit longer than a thinner paper like I did with the first one. And remember to layer. So I'm not just filling in next to what I already put down, but I'm layering. And this is gonna give it a more dynamic depth. I've got flowers and more of that green swatch paper. I store sheet music because I use that a lot. I keep it all together. And up above, covering up what I already did, layering in an interesting way. Here's a doily and this is gonna make for a really interesting texture when I paint over it. Now I'm continuing on with some Payne's Gray. Again, layering over what I've already done. Playing with the mark making. Seeing what happens when I mix the colors together that are still wet. And dragging the paint through like with those lines. Covering things that are textured. And seeing what happens when I layer over other colors. All right, I'm kind of enjoying that spiral theme. And here I'm using that green with some drips, mixing in some water, see what's gonna happen. And here I have some darker paper. It's uh, got a lot of fibers in it, so that's fun. And the repetition of using three keeps it interesting. And because that's a cool dark navy blue, I decided to pop in some warmer colors and lighter colors for contrast. And then I carry them across the canvas to balance it out. The more you use things on different sides of the canvas, the more it's gonna seem balanced. And I can paint over the different papers, paint over things in a transparent way or more opaque to cover things up. It's all good. 
You can paint more um, opaque over things that you don't like. Sometimes we uh, experiment and things get muddy or you don't like how something reacted. So you can just paint over it and it helps to let it dry. So right now, while the canvas is drying, I am uh, kind of taking inventory of the papers that I'm considering using as focal points. So, so far I've been using more textures and now it's looking a little crazy and um, I'm gonna do some cover up with more collage. This is, has some written word on it, which uh, makes for a nice, um, almost like a pattern with words and balancing it up at the top because I had some at the bottom. Things are looking asymmetrical right now. Here's some filigree, it has some black in it, some heavier value. And now I'm gonna start playing with some tissues. These tissues are a ton of fun because they kind of melt into the background. That one didn't wanna rip. It had more um, like fibers in it. And so they'll kind of veil over the color under and uh, create some really interesting crinkly textures. Here's some flowers. These are also from tissue. They're from a napkin, and I peeled the other ply off, and um, I'm going to apply those down. So they do kind of dissolve. That white kind of uh, becomes transparent. You can see what's behind it a little bit. This is thicker paper, so it's going to be um, really a nice gestural botanical piece for the foreground. This is kind of tissue. It's a natural paper. And when I wet it with the acrylic medium, the background comes through a bit, but the metallic on it didn't fade away. So that's really fun. More of that filigree to balance that out. And some tissue, just softening that up. Here's another design element in that little nook up there. And some more sheet music. That's really old paper. It's yellowed quite a bit. And we have some tissue down at the bottom. So you can see how thick or thin the paper is will make a difference. Now I'm taking away some of the busyness by painting over transparent layers or washes. I'm letting some of the background come through, but then again, some of it's covered up, eliminating what I'm not as cra crazy about and covering up some of that tissue to make more texture. And I can make things stand out by painting around them. So images that I'm enjoying, I can um, go around and they'll pop because they're gonna stand out and there's more contrast around them. And this is called painting the negative space. So I'm taking out some of that busyness. Now I have some teal mixed in with the white to give it a little added color up at the top, just cause I felt like it. I'm letting things show through, kind of like how I was talking about a veil or like a misty painting technique. You can use dry brush, which is when you don't have that much paint in your brush, but things still show through and there are layers coming forward. I wanna to tone down these darker elements in the front, so I'm gonna use the same line technique that I used up in the top right corner and just kinda of tone them down a little bit. Next, I'm gonna add some painted elements, so I'm adding some leaves to those flowers, starting with a dark blue, and then I'm gonna add some green over the top, a little bit lighter, so this dark blue is more like a shadow color, and now I'm adding green and white to make um, the green of the leaves. And then some white and yellow to bring forward the, the highest highlights. And some other mark making around, just kind of fluttering around. Okay. 
So next I'm going to add my focal point, which is my bird. But, well, no, I didn't add it. I kind of plotted it out, but I'm going to add just a few more leaves. And these are going to move the eye around the canvas. They act as arrows. And it's a compositional technique that I use where I use line work and different elements in the piece to um, kind of point the eye around. And in this case, I'm doing kind of the circular uh, movement around the canvas to point the, the eye around so it doesn't just fall off the canvas so we don't just look away. Okay, so I sided with this, this one bird and I'm going to apply it down and I'm going to take care to make sure that it's really nice and straight the way I want it because that's my focal point. These are fabric elements. They're actually embroidered mesh fabric. So the mesh is um, what the embroidery is on and um, makes for a really interesting uh, lift on the canvas. Here's some tissue with some polka dots on it and the white of the tissue just kind of melts away into that background. I can see straight through it but it leaves the polka dots and I really love how it mimics the markings on the bird. Check that out. So it just, there's this uh, spotted element throughout circulating the eye as well. And I'm going to open up the center. I've been doing that recently. I've been kind of opening up the middle of the canvas for uh, more negative space, more, more place for the eye to rest. And finally, a little bit more tissue paper, but this time with line work, and that gives it kind of a botanical feel, like it's reaching into the middle of the canvas, kind of, uh, there's some bramble maybe uh, poking out from those leaves and uh, working its way in in a, in a, a delicate way. Here, a little bit of uh, flower embroidery, so this is fabric, and then a little star next to the bird, very cute. And we're done. So here is the finished piece up close. You can see that texture from the doily. All of those layers, some drips, some crinkling, the line work, uh, some of that metallic tissue, my flowers, the sheet music, um, my main character, the little bird sitting on his flower. So cute and all of the embroidery that kind of just pops off of the canvas, some of that written word there. And I love how the star kind of relates to the bird and it's looking at the star. So there's a little relationship happening there with the star and the bird, just so special. All right, I hope you enjoyed this process. Thank you for watching. I had a lot of fun making this piece and I encourage you to try it out on your own, in your own personal way with the materials that you have on hand. If you find this valuable, you might like to leave a donation to show your appreciation. I'd love to continue making video tutorials for you and it helps so much to be compensated for my work. If you've been out of work or underemployed, I'm with you. So please don't feel obligated to donate. You can still help by liking, subscribing, and sharing, especially sharing this video on your social media to help me spread the word. I do have another free gift for you. It's my free online creative care package, which includes more painting videos, art foundation techniques, art supply recommendations, free art business resources, and a discount code for my original artwork and classes. It's a big value, all for free, and it's linked below as well. Art is a beautiful experiment, so no matter where you are on your art journey, the most important thing is to show up and get started with an open mind. Practice and you will learn something new every time. Happy painting, much love.